Okay, I hit go live. Let's see when it pops up. Hey everyone, happy Friday. I am so excited to be back with you this week. It was the man show last week. This week it is the lady show. Welcome, I'm Amy Novakovich. This is Finance Friday. This is the show where we give you the information to help you save, grow, and protect your money. We give you the information as well to help you not get taken advantage of. Follow us on Twitter at Novakovich Amy and at Nova Wealth Management. Management's abbreviated MGMT. Check out our YouTube channel and our Instagram, which we're building out now. But today, I'm going to learn all about this today because I have the queen of social media on today, founder of Joy Publicity. She goes back years in marketing. She's going to share a lot of information with us today to help us obviously not get taken advantage of and help us grow our business. I want to claim a new term because this is like a new website, right? The website traffic controller queen as well through content marketing. Please help me give a warm welcome to Jeanette Joy Fisher. Thank you so much for being here with me today, Jeanette. Thank you for having me, Amy. It's a pleasure to see you. Of course, a pleasure to see you as well. So I want to start by giving everybody just a little bit of your background because you have done so much it blows my mind. I mean, you're author of 27 books. Right, right. Some textbooks. Oh my goodness. Well, and does that include the textbooks? Yes, it does. Oh my goodness. So you worked on, you said author of Flip, you were on Flip That House. Right. You were featured uh, on yes. Flip That House. Right. So talk uh, a little bit about your background and how you started in real estate. Oh, my husband and I started flipping houses before it was called flipping houses way back in the 80s. And we just discovered because I like to fix houses up and redo them that we could do fix and flip. So that's what we, we just How long them. would it usually take you to flip a home? Like, would you do, I don't know, two months, six months? Well, we used to live in them with all of our children. So it would take us 10 months. And my kids, we lived in Newport Beach and we would move every few months, every 10 months about. But we always stayed in the same neighborhood. And I, oh and my I, goodness. But um, now today, I the last house I fixed up and flipped was a cabin. I kept it for a year because of capital gains tax. Okay, so right. I use it. And then I- Makes sense. I took, um, I, I took a small home um, and I turned that home into the cabin and I turned the cabin into a house in Canyon Lake. So I just kept- you know, moving on. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but originally we would live in the homes and we would fix them up and then we would sell them and we would sell our houses in like three hours. What? Yes. Wait, <laughs> yes. you mean from the second that you would list them? Right. How, what, what? How'd you do that? Well, sometimes people would know about the house coming on the market, but basically, um, I just know that what you would do. You would spread the word like ahead of time before you would put it on the market. Yeah, people would see us working on the house and they'd come in and see it. And I, you know, I, I was always very social before social media. I was very <laughs> social. I had a lot of friends. But um, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Now I'm going to sell my house I'm living in, I think. I'm not sure. Oh. About that. That's another topic. And that is another topic. Yeah. Thanks. So you went from real estate to then interior design or interior design was first? Well, I studied interior design at college. Okay. And so I thought I knew it all about interior design until we moved to Florida and got this big 6,800 square foot, three-story Queen Anne Victorian built in 1878. And we remodeled the kitchen and the kitchen didn't feel right. My husband was very upset when I said it didn't feel right. So well, I'm I don't know, but I probably would get that same reaction. <laughs> So I'm pretty I sure. I went to the University of Florida with my son who was studying architecture and he showed me how to research on the microfiche machine back then and I researched interior design backwards and came up with the psychology of interior design. So later on I took I studied marketing psychology. I kept going back to school. I have like four BAs. Marketing psychology? Right. And so I put my marketing psychology in with the design psychology. That's a thing. That's a real thing, a marketing psychology. 
Yeah, it is. Oh my goodness. I, I see, I'm a numbers person. I am completely, I don't, I didn't know that. Oh, well, I'm all about emotions. You know, what do you think? Marketing is telling the story, right? Well, it's all about right. the emotions. That drive I guess you're trying to, you're trying to, yeah, you're trying to capitalize on people's emotions. Mm -hmm. So when you're, so, right? I, I mean, am, that's what I understand. <laughs> so I did it to psychology. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, we were breaking up a little bit. I think I talked, I was speaking over you. I apologize for that. Oh, but, no. Uh, the marketing psychology is really important for today. And that's what I put into joy publicity. But how I got into doing joy publicity is um, when my daughter and my husband passed away, I tweeted my life away. And so I just naturally have a big account because I've been on Twitter since 2007. Oh my goodness. So yeah, you have 176,000 followers on Twitter? Yeah, since the cleanup. <laughs> Even <laughs> after the cleanup though, right? We were just talking about that. You lost only 20,000 followers. Some people lost hundreds of thousands. and. Right. right. Well, because they bought, they bought followers and um, I never did like the followers that they were selling because I realized that they were all fake accounts or they were, uh, they don't speak English. What good is so, it? For uh, me is that one of the ways, how did you recognize that they're a fake account? Well, when you've been on Twitter, as long as I have, you can tell it. If you go and they have like two tweets and they have a, a thousand, they have a thousand followers and they're following 4,000, they're just there to be get to be able to DM you. That's all they want is to be able to DM you. They just want you to follow them so that they can send you a DM. Well, a, I don't a message, right? Like through the messenger? Right. So I, I don't read DMs much unless somebody tells me in a tweet that they DM'd me, then I'll go read it. Okay. But in fact, yeah, I was listening to radio in the car the other day and I heard these guys on the talk radio talking about how they didn't like Twitter because Twitter was all full of hate. And I thought, wow, they have such a different perspective than I do because Twitter is all about love when I go to my account. Well, because your tweets are very positive and it's about joy and love. That's not, that is your world, but that isn't the general Twitter world, I don't think. Well, I don't ever go look at the general Twitter world. I only look at my own little personal stream of my friends. Yes, so go follow <laughs> at Joy Publicity right now and you will feel happy throughout the day. <laughs> or or Jeanette Joy. Follow Jeanette Joy. Jeanette That's Joy. My, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so um, you can tell a fake account by, <laughs> I like to say, if it's I a know. general, a general's not going to be on Twitter following me and saying, hello, beautiful. I'm sorry. <laughs> a general's just not. <laughs> I got general. that recently. It was <laughs> a Marine. It was a, it was a picture of a Marine. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, they say that they're general so-and-so, and sometimes they are, you look at the real general and you see that this is the real general and you know that general's not tweeting at me. I know, he's married with his kids and everything. It's like, uh, okay, that's a total fake account. Or they say that they're an engineer. I don't know why these fake guys like to be engineers. I don't even know an engineer. Do you know anybody who's an engineer anymore? Uh, my father. <laughs> well, my father was an engineer but Other than that, no. <laughs> Or a medical doctor stationed in Afghanistan or yeah. whatever, and they pretend like they're American, but their English is broken. And yeah. they're not, they don't use the right grammar and they don't spell right. I mean, why would you follow somebody like that back? Block them. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, so we're talking, for those of you just joining, we're talking about how to identify a fake account on Twitter with Jeanette Joy Fisher. So she knows all about social media marketing, content marketing. She's written 27 books, authored 27 books. So we're getting into the nitty gritty. We're getting there. We're talking about the fake accounts on Twitter, but you have 176,000 Twitter followers, which is in very impressive. So how, how, did you organically, because this is you, like it's, it's not like this big giant company, you know, it's you, like, how have you give some tips? I know you can't give away everything. Cause I want to talk about your workshops and what you do in your workshops, which I've had awesome feedback on by the way, but you know, talk about how you organically grew to that many followers. Well, I tweet a lot. And I used to tweet a lot and I use hashtags that are meaningful to me. Okay. Uh, and I have a group of friends, a big group of friends who are tweet, I tweet every day and we just keep growing all of us together. Um, 
it's not, Twitter is a conversation. It's not a fan club. If somebody doesn't follow me back, I unfollow them because I want to be able to have the full relationship of give and take, you know, I don't right. believe that. I mean, I might follow a fan, but if, I figure if Ellen can follow me back and Lydia Cornell and um, other actors, you know, well, okay. I, I you know, I will follow them. Kelsey Grammer, right? Kelsey Grammer, I met him because of Twitter and I also met Sid Ben Graham. Yeah. So, and I met you because of a tweet. I mean, you know, it's like, because I got to go to sit again because of a tweet. Right. Yes. <laughs> I know. Yes. I met Jean Jeanette out in LA at an event that we were both at. So this is like faith. <laughs> so but I, actually, I used to have tweet ups and I'd go to restaurants and then have people come and like meet ups and we'd have tweet ups. And so that also helped me to meet local people. But I go to a lot of events. And, and that's not dangerous? You don't find that? Like, you you knew the people on Twitter then? Well, I invited people that I had been in conversations with on oh, Twitter. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That you've gotten. Uh, not just one, you know, like 100. You invite 100 people and 10, 20, 30 would come. But okay. you know, I, had, I had publicity parties at my home. I've seen that. Well, I've seen, you have wonderful videos, right? Of these parties that you have at your home. Like talk about that a little bit. So you have not only parties though, but that's separate from the workshop. So the parties that you have are social media parties? Yes, <laughs> because people like to come and get their photograph taken around the pool and they like to interview each other out by the pool because I, I have the world's most beautiful pool. I designed it myself and had it built. And if I, I always say, if, if I find a more beautiful pool, then I'm gonna sell this one. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so that blows up because you have, you know, how many people sharing all these photos and everything with pictures of your home and you, you at a party with them and they tag you in it, I'm sure, right? Yeah, right. So it just spreads. Right. I've had probably, I think seven or eight um, joy publicity parties. That's crazy. See, I'm writing this down. I'm taking notes. Oh, well, um, by each of the next one, you'll have to fly out and come. I would absolutely, yeah. it would be an honor. I would love to be there. We, um, I usually have about 50 to 60 people, sometimes 75. We had 125 at a wedding here. But oh, you had a wedding? We've had two weddings here. Oh my goodness. That's nice of you. <laughs> 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 weddings are they can be they can be a ton of fun and they can be a lot of drama that's great <laughs> yeah. so talk about some of your books that you have written you know what is the proven what is something that is proven on content marketing you know you talked we talked a little bit before this about how article marketing before just content marketing so talk a little bit about that development and what is meaningful in that arena well, in the old days, I wrote articles and they took content out of my books and they put them into articles. Okay. Took, I have uh, two, over 2 million views of those articles on easing articles. Well, um, article marketing has grown up to be content because it's not just articles now. You have a meme is content. You know, right. your brand is content. It's all your brand is, everything content. is content. Yeah. Your content is really important. And actually, um, Google still likes backlinks best for SEO. So having an article on one of my websites would get you links back to your, your website, but I direct the traffic by the social media. So in other words, if you put up an article on um, joy relationships, you know, about financial relationships or something, yeah. okay. that going divorce and, uh, and your money or something like that. If you put that up on joy relationships, then I would drive traffic from that Twitter account. Plus Jeanette joy would also direct traffic to that. So, um, it's content marketing and, and the social media combination. That's my publicity. You yeah. know, traditional publicity. Yeah. It's not the traditional and you know what? It's not the traditional, um, social media ads, like how do you feel about building people that are watching that are trying to build in their business through ads on Facebook? You know, what, what do you recommend on that and using ads 
to promote your business? You know, what would you say about the ad and what it should look like? Or should you not do an ad? Well, how do you feel about that? I think you can do a combination of things. If ads are working for you, fine. But I want to caution you against Facebook and putting all your eggs in that basket. I worked over a year on a Facebook group for real estate agents because they're okay. in the market. I had 10,500 in that group. And Facebook let somebody steal it from me and they won't give it back to me. And I've been through all the channels. I emailed them. I did everything they asked me to. And they just ignored me. So you know what? I, I'm not a fan of Facebook. I would not give them a penny. Sorry. Oh my goodness. Now Twitter's taken away a couple of my accounts too, but <laughs> they gave me back when somebody hacked to that joy, they gave it back to me. Twitter listens, you know? So somebody hacked the Facebook group? Yes. And they left, they, they left group, you know, they, they hacked my, my Facebook account. And they went and they I was having a party one day and they put can't party canceled on the day of the party, like at 2.30. And I didn't know it because I'm not on Facebook. I'm getting ready for the party. <laughs> so some of my friends actually turned around and went back because they saw that. And then at the same time, they went into, you know, mm -hmm. how you have group, you need group, they left the group. Um, oh in my, my and I can not get back in. Still to this day? No, yeah, it's been over a year since it's been done. And nobody's doing anything with it because there's it no, just, it's no there. It yeah, just, it's just there. That's crazy. How long ago? You, oh, so it was over a year ago that it got hacked. Right. So all see, and this is the first time I've heard of that though, because a lot of people do recommend that you create a Facebook group, right? right. And that you drive traffic to your Facebook group, and then you can go live in the group and things like that and drive ads in the group. Can you put ads in a group? I don't know. <laughs> I think you, <laughs> yes, but you know, um, I, I did go live in San Diego at Steve Farber's event. They had this beautiful singer. Right. And I went live on Facebook and I got two people. Now I have 5,000 friends on Facebook and maybe another 7,000 following or something like that. Yeah. So, but I only had two people come live, but I went on Twitter live with the next singer up on stage and I had a hundred people within 10 seconds. So you can go live on Twitter? Yes. I, I mean, see, I don't know these things and maybe everybody out there watching knows these things. I'm here with Jeanette Joy Fisher. We're talking all things social media and all things marketing. She has a very different approach to things, which is why I'm so interested in this interview. If you missed the first already 19 minutes of this interview, I highly suggest to go back and watch. We're talking about all different things. How to identify a fake Twitter account to, you know, all things social media, Facebook getting hacked. But so if you have Twitter live, right? And you, is there any limit to how long you can go live? And is it only seen by your Twitter followers? Because I know like on Facebook, when you go live on Facebook, not necessarily everybody that likes your Facebook page actually gets notified of the live. I know that. So on Twitter, does it work the same way? Or it sounds like it doesn't work that same way if you had that many people on within 10 seconds. They sent out a notice to everybody that I was live that followed me. Like, okay. a, like a, a, not a tweet that, you know, over your screen on your phone, you would see Jeanette Joy's live. And so people could click on that and go there, but they'd have to be following me, I believe. And to get notified. Yes, and I was only, it was, I was on for about three minutes, so I don't know how long you can go because I bet they, it went for three minutes, I know that. So, so what has, so what would you say, like in your business, in getting you clients, would you say the platform is t in this space that Twitter has really helped you the most gain clients or what do you use social media for to convert in your business? Do you usually simply to grow reputation so that you have more credibility when you get a client? Do you use it to actually get clients? Tell me how you use social media in, in your business. Well, I use it to get clients. I've used it to get real estate clients. Real estate clients, yeah, okay. But basically, it's, it's the first step in building a relationship. You have you have a tweet, that you attract somebody, they follow you, then you yeah. them to your webinar that you're doing. And yeah. Uh, and then they get to know you. It's like 
dating, you know, you'd have to know somebody, or they, they say seven hours spend with someone, right? <laughs> yeah, so there's like that rule of thumb, yeah. Yeah, so if you and you hear, well, you're supposed to have an explainer video on your website that's like three minutes or less because nobody wants to invest 20 minutes. But the thing is, the more that you, they watch you, if you have an explainer video for 20 minutes, hey, that's half an hour. That, you know, that's half an hour. So then I only have six and a half more hours to get there. There you go. Okay. I can buy that. I get it. So it's like, I want to have to see your name everywhere. And when I was selling my books, um, you know, my books are out of date. I haven't really kept up the writing that much. But um, when I was selling the books through article marketing, I was at Disneyland having lunch at an event and somebody came up to me and said, hey, will you sign my book? And she gave me, it was Doghouse to Dollhouse for Dollars. She yes. recognized me because she had seen me on YouTube and stuff. And this was a long time ago. Um, so I felt really, you know, but I felt like a really big author now. But yeah. Self-published. But that particular book, I did make $100,000 off of. Doghouse to Dollhouse for Dollars. Right, it's out of print. And in fact, I can't even find my own book. I have <laughs> But I need to redo it because it's, um, you know, when you write a book, you think it's going to be evergreen, but it's not necessarily true because things change so fast now. And, and how did you market that book to have it be I, so successful? Article marketing. I used to own the term article flipping marketing. houses. Uh, it, because, and so people would Google flipping houses and I was on radio too. So it's all how it goes. You know, I was like on um, Bloomberg radio and, uh, and TV and, you know. Well, you were on Flip That House. How was that experience? My husband died during the filming of it. So it was oh, very my goodness. So it was the most watched Flip That House episode ever because it was like going to those tragedy ones. So well, I think it's the only it. tragedy one that they had. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't really remember much about being on it because it was so traumatic. Was it a residence that you were living in at the time? No, it was just a little house. And some artists came in and helped me finish it. And that's why I put that house with foes, the name of that book. Yeah, yeah, you have that book. That is probably still very relevant in today's market. I think it probably is. But the problem with this book is that, see, it's color. Oh, yeah. Um. Anyway, it, it's color, and it has a story about the house and the design. And uh, Mark Victor Hansen and uh, <laughs> Mylon are in it. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Um, so it, it, it cost so much for me to get, get this book printed that it was I was selling it for sixty dollars. But you see, oh my it, goodness, that it, is expensive. Yes, but it, it's not just a book, it's a system and you're getting the design psychology. And now the that's- design, See, now you've said that twice now. So you've said design psychology and right. marketing psychology. So I took all my books off the market because the design psychology is um, trade secrets for Joy to the Home. Got it, okay. So one of my books is Joy to the Home and Joy it's home. not published because that information in there is just my my stuff. Like if I'm gonna come and design a house for someone, you know, it costs a lot of money. And I'm not just gonna give that to all the interior designers out there. Yeah. <laughs> so would you still do, you still do some real estate, you still do some interior design, and then you're working on all this social media. So all for all these business owners out there, or even people that are working multiple salary jobs, because I know what that is like too. How do you juggle it all? Like what would be one of your recommendations to stay on task and to, to stay focused and to work towards a goal like in social media? Like what would you recommend to people out there to be more efficient? Well, I would say get your social media under control and do it in 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day. Like get um, a routine down, right? Right. And the best time for me is 6 a.m. So that would be nine o'clock your time. That seems to be like when, if I post something at 6 a.m., it it gets a lot of retweets and a lot of likes. Yeah. But now I have people like, well, go look at my stuff and they'll retweet it because they like it. So they'll go actually to my page all random times and they'll go way down into my feed and they'll retweet something. So 
but you're good at that too. Like I see that about you. Like even sometimes randomly you'll go down and you'll retweet people's stuff. So yeah. I, I mean, that's gotta be a tip out there for some people too. Like when you're working on social media, you're being active and you're building relationships is really what you're there for. Right. Right. So you're retweeting, so you're commenting, um, yeah. you're liking, like, I know, I see that about you all the time. You pop up in my comments, therefore I'm seeing your name. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it yeah. sticks. Right. So, um, but I, not everyone needs social media. It depends on what you're doing. If you have okay. a business, you need social media. If you have a website, you need social media. Social media is a way for you to protect your reputation. And you have to, I never buy a website unless I go and I look and see if I can get that social media account first, okay. because I'm not going to buy a .com that I can't have the Twitter handle for. You know, if You've got to protect your name. So your you brand. can't get a dot com that you can't get a dot com unless I can get the Twitter handle. That is good. Okay. You want, to, you want to have your brand everywhere. You want your name everywhere. Now, the reason that I'm doing joy publicity is not because I'm in love with publicity. The reason I'm doing this is because I was super depressed. I mean, you know, I had a lot of tragedies and then I lost everything and I had to start over. Right. Well, I did start over and then I had another low spot and I got super depressed and I was suicidal. And I thought, okay, I, I started singing hymns because I couldn't stop crying. Yeah. And when I'm singing, I can't, I can't um, cry. So I started singing hymns. I sang hymns for four hours. Oh my goodness. Done. I said, okay, God, take me now or tell me what to do. And I thought I was going to hear this little sweet angel voice saying, it's okay, honey. It's going to be okay. No, yeah. I got Jeanette, get over yourself and go help people. Hey, you know what? I guess that is what you needed in that moment. Yeah. And that's the only time I've ever heard anybody like talk to me like God. Yeah. Right. Anyway. So that's what I do. And that's for great. Me, people, it's all about getting their business cell going and everything. So I have all these websites because my husband, not only what did we flip houses, we flipped domains way back a long time ago. Is that and still a thing today? Yes, it's called dom domaining or domainers. They're domainers. They flip domains. So I have like 105 websites. Okay. I built them out to sell them. Well, I haven't sold it. You know, I have sex. Like so old. you buy the domain, you create the website, and then you sell it? Uh-huh. Huh. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, so then I thought, well, I have all these websites I've been building out. Well, what about if I turn them into content and help people get their content and I drive traffic with social media? So that's what I'm doing. And so it's you all put content on the site, you drive people to the site, and then you sell it with all that value. Yeah. Huh. Okay. But eventually, I will sell everything. I want to retire. Um, I'm not sure exactly when that will be, but I, I was just going to say, I don't see you like fully <laughs> retiring ever. My no, I'm going to write books with my grandchildren. There you go. Right oh. <laughs> well, my goodness, you have just given us so much all in one shot. I wrote down just a few things. We talked about that. Everybody should really have a three minute video or less about themselves, right? That's no, what make it longer. That's oh, what you said, make it longer. Make it longer because everybody says you want a three minute video. I'm saying, no, give them more content. Oh. Like, have a three minute, have three minute. Keep it going. Make a playlist. If anybody needs help with any of this, they can just email me um, at Jeanette Joy, J E A N E T T E, Joy at Gmail. It's the best email for me. I'll put that in the comments. And um, because I'm, I'm here to help. So, how can I help you? Well, and tell everybody where to follow you on Twitter and social media. Uh, Jeanette Joy, at Jeanette Joy, at Joy Publicity. And I'm also hashtag Joy Publicity. And if you hashtag something, something that you really want tweeted out, hashtag it with Joy Publicity, and then I will retweet it for you. <gasps> oh, that is good. Use hashtag, and then you will retweet it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. That's good, Jeanette. You're the best. Thank you. I mean, this was 
extremely impactful. What I'll do, I think I have to do this. I'll do like a short two minute summary video, like a YouTube video. And then I'll post that in the comments too. So people can get the summary of all the helpful tips that you gave. And then I'll hashtag it <laughs> and we can, you know, get the word out to people that way too. Right. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever put joy publicity hashtag on Facebook. Maybe I should. Maybe I should forgive Facebook for being mean, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you don't have to. You because know. Even if I hashtag it, if you just click on it, it'll go to whatever has had the hashtag in it. So if it leads you to Twitter, then it leads you there. So that's fine. <laughs> I'm good with that. Thank you so much for being here and giving us all these tips. This was great. I can't even imagine. I can't wait until your next workshop because I can't even imagine this is the short little half hour that I've had with you, the content that, that you go over in your workshops. Because I again, I've heard excellent feedback on the workshop. So make sure like you tag me in your next workshop announcement because I want to participate. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so all much. All right. Everybody find Jeanette and... Let's all for sure use that hashtag and she'll retweet it and we'll connect. Okay. Thanks, Jeanette, so much. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Bye.